Whether you're on a production film set, shooting an interview, or covering a live event, you'll want to capture the clearest and most natural sounding audio possible. And while an on-camera shotgun mic may be suitable for capturing ambient sounds or subjects positioned relatively close to the camera, that's not always a practical solution. Boom mic setups are by far one of the best ways to capture sound and used on many productions. Say if you're shooting a series of interviews, by having a boom mic set up, you can move quickly between interviewees without having to mic them up individually. What if you needed to record sounds from say a moving object, a car, or a train? With a boom mic setup, we can position our shotgun really low to the ground to properly capture that sound. While we suggest that you have a dedicated sound technician handling audio, you may find yourself in a position where you're responsible for both capturing visuals and recording audio. With this in mind, we're going to go through the different components in building your ideal boom mic kit and just take a look at the different options out there depending on your specific needs. One of the first things you want to look into is getting a boom pole. Boom poles can be found constructed out of either aluminum or carbon fiber. Carbon fiber poles are lighter, but they also tend to cost a little bit more. If you find yourself in run and gun situations where you're expected to physically hold up a boom mic setup, we definitely suggest going with a carbon fiber pole so it's lighter and it minimizes fatigue. Next, you'll want to figure out just how far you need your boom mic setup to reach. Most boom poles are telescopic and maximum length range from two to over 20 feet. And while a longer boom pole will give you a wider degree of positioning, say on a large set, it also means added weight onto your setup. One last thing to consider is whether your boom pole is internally cabled or not. A cabled boom pole has a microphone wire running along the inside of it, allowing you to attach your shotgun mic on one end and then your sound mixer, audio recording device, or even the camera on the other. This way, you can quickly extend or retract your boom pole without having to worry about unmanageable cables running along the outside of it. Because shotgun mics are usually very sensitive to sound and vibrations, you'll want to isolate it from the rest of your boom mic setup. This is typically done by mounting your shotgun mic onto a shock mount. Shock mounts come in several different styles, but they basically utilize rubber bands, which will reduce or eliminate any noise caused by you moving or repositioning your boom mic setup. When mounting your mic onto a shock mount, just remember to avoid dragging the openings of your mic along the rubber bands, as this may cause wear and tear. We suggest either sliding it in starting from the back of the mic or popping it in over top, depending on the type of shock mount you have. And finally, you'll want to cover your mic with some sort of windscreen. A windscreen not only reduces or eliminates noise caused by wind hitting your mic, but it also protects it against physical impact and from foreign particles getting lodged into it. Here is a simple foam windscreen. A windscreen like this will provide some wind protection without drastically altering the acoustics of your audio. For even more protection against wind and physical impact, we suggest you covering your mic with a blimp windscreen. A blimp windscreen provides a two-stage barrier against wind noise. The outer layer breaks down or slows down the wind, while the dead space inside the blimp further cuts it down. For really windy conditions, you may want to consider covering your blimp or foam windscreen with a furry windshield. The increased surface area and design of these windshields will help further minimize noise caused by wind. Keep in mind, the thicker your windshield, the increased chances of it actually affecting the acoustics of your audio. So here we have a couple of techniques for operating a boom mic. When you first walk onto the set, the first thing you want to look for is where is the light. Here we have a key light to my right and we have Kathleen prepping for an interview here on my left. To avoid casting shadows onto Kathleen or casting shadows onto the background, we'll want to avoid placing the boom mic between our key light and Kathleen here. So what I'm gonna do is take the boom mic and reposition it to the opposite side of the key light. So the next thing you'll want to look for is the position of your boom mic. You'll want to place the boom mic as close to your talent's mouth as possible, allowing you to capture the cleanest audio. So what you'll want to watch out for when positioning your boom mic is to give your talent enough room so when they lean forward, they don't move past your boom mic. I'm very excited about this interview. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm very excited about this interview. Thank you so much for having me. So when your talent first walks in and sits down, make sure you're watching their body movements to see how they move when they talk. And so when you're positioning your boom mic, you're making sure you're giving them enough room. I'm very excited to be here for this interview. Thank you so much for having me. You'll want to make sure you're pointing the front of the boom mic towards your talent's mouth or lower chin area, keeping it within about a foot and a half of them. 
As I'm lowering my boom mic, I'll want to make sure I'm talking to the camera operator so I know when my boom mic is entering their frame. Oh, that's it. Can you go back up a bit? Great. Let's say your camera operator wanted a lot more headroom in their shot. This would force us to raise our boom pole and position it a lot farther from our talent than we would like. In this situation, you might want to consider booming from below. One last tip we have for you is to just take a second, close your eyes, and listen for any unwanted noise. In this example, we have an air conditioner blowing from my left. And while we can't turn off the air conditioner, what I can do is instead of positioning the boom mic pointed towards the air conditioner, I can reposition it so it points the other way. My audio would be super clean right now if it weren't for that air conditioner. A simple boom adjustment and hear how much clearer my audio is.